G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, regular viewers would have seen my old Shawblin 102 metal lathe from the 19, mid-1930s, one of the original first edition Shawblin toolmaker's lathes that was produced way back. And I bought it as a wreck and uh, restored it. Uh, to rework all the dovetails, they were all worn to hell and uh, put in a lot of hours on that. And now it's pretty good, it's nice and accurate and I use it a lot. Uh, it was cheap when I got it, it was 350 or 360 dollars Australian but it was in poor condition and I had to fit the motor, it's a big old motor from a similar period my coal and it's a handy lathe and I use it primarily set up for collet work so when I'm well my Chinese 10 inch swing lathe is my main workhorse this is the, the go to lathe for for collets even though I can set up the Chinese lathe for collets it's nice to have a dedicated lathe just for collets which is what this basically is and the advantage is it's got feed through on the spindle whereas one of the Chinese lathe it uses a Morse collet chuck so you can't feed through and uh, it's just, just a nice all round machine you've got extremely long top slide travel way more than regular because that's what tool these lathes are all about and you can do tapers and angle the cuts any which way you want so they're extremely versatile and of course to use these you set them up with a test indicator of some sort or a dial indicator because you can angle the cross slide any way you want and uh, not just the top slide. Anyway today I'm going to use it a bit differently I'm going to use it with a four jaw chuck that came with it and I'm going to machine up some brass so I'll just take a bit of footage and you can just watch it in action and yep a bit of eye candy. All right let's get on with it. Well, good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to machine up this brass fitting. We've got to reduce the diameter, take some of the thread off. I'm going to solder this into another fitting for that steam engine I'm working on. And uh, to do that, of course, we'll have to use the four jaw. So I'll set it up and then we'll come back. In this case I'm going to be machining back the thread so you use the four jaw because it's a eccentric shaped item and as you can't use a test indicator on a thread just put a drill a um, snug fitting drill I'm using incrementals in this case uh, in the centre of the job to take your reading off of that and that way you can get it set up you know, to do the job. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate because it's going to be sold into another fitting, but you want to get it as good as you can. So that's a good little trick. Don't try trying to, try, don't try taking the reading off of the thread because it won't be very successful, I'll tell you right now. Okay, moving on. Time for some oil. This is the Eagle oil can that Alan in the UK at Richo Steam Tech sent me. And I responded with a uh, with one of my oil cans, a, uh, a Riga. Actually, it was my best Riga too. And these are a nice little oil can. I'd never seen one of these in Australia before. Made in the USA and uh, quite collectible now. As are a lot of oil cans, you know, because the modern oil cans you get are absolute rubbish in most cases. There's a few good ones around but not too much. In this case we're going to machine this thread to go up inside this so we'll just do a size fit. We'll just machine off that thread.
just a bit more. That's all right. These fittings actually, when you machine them, uh, regardless of the style, <laughs> they're, they're actually not very symmetrical. Right? They, mis they make them that they look good, but you find if you ever work on this sort of stuff, that yeah, they're uh, they're all over the place. So now I'll solder that into that, and that gives me a a, a 90 degree fitting that will go onto the the steam engine piston. And to do that. I'll use the uh, little HHO generator. So, yeah, you might as well see me do that as well. I've just put back the collet chuck again. It just screws on. And, of course, you would have seen this little quick change tool post that I got from Banggood. Yeah, it's great. It works fine on this size lathe, you know. I saw some people, you know, complaining, oh, they're no good, they're rubbish, and, you know... No, they work fine. If you use them on the right size lathe, they're perfect. It works on this front lathe fine, because I'm only doing light, light work. And it would be good on the 7 by 12 as well, I think, you know. But in this case, it's perfect for this, for this job. Moving on. OK, and now I'm going to drill out the centre of this union. I've already done one side, just to get more, more airflow. To do that, I'm going to use the pillar drill. Now, this, this is a pillar drill with a rotary table. If you ever buy a pillar drill, get one with a rotary table because it's so much more useful than just the, the fixed tables because you can rotate the table, which means you're rotating your job on this arc and also this arc. This one also has a rack so you can wind it up and down easily. You don't have to hump the thing up and down. A lot of these so-called high-end drill presses are really crap as far as I'm concerned as far as using them. They're good if you set them up for one job and just, you know, for factory work. But if you're using a drill press and you want to be moving stuff around all the time, definitely want rotary table and you definitely want a rack. So this is a good big old Taiwanese one I've had for years, 30 years. And I bought it second hand and it's still as good as new. So I'll position this. Now I'm using plain jaws so I don't mark the job. But what I, what I usually do is I wind this back and I have a, a small engineer's vice in there with a checker plate, checkered um, jaws on it. And I can just take it out when I want, want to hold stuff and not mark it. So yeah, having that the little vice in there, you can move it side to side as well, do whatever you want. It's an easy way around it. So in this case, we can easily position that under the drill. We can crank it up with the with the rack, and we'll just center it. It's that easy. Lock the table. job done. So you can see what I'm saying about the rotary table. You can move it that way under your job or this way and you can get the exact position you want. They're the only, only drill press I think that are worth buying quite frankly. Okay, that job's done, now we'll move on. Okay, here's the steam engine I'm working on, and as you can see, it's progressing quite nicely. I might machine this back a bit, shorten it, so I do a bit of a neater, neater job. But basically, we're going to get that in like that, and uh, yeah, should make it reasonably neat. And the airline will come from here across to a fitting here and from here to here. And the feed, air feed will go in here and these are both exhausts. Hopefully this will all work, I think it will. I don't see why it won't. 
and it's just built up out of leftover bits and pieces I had laying in the workshop. So once again, you know, small lathe, you can do all this sort of stuff, you can <laughs> spend endless hours playing around with it, have great, great fun, and if it works at the end, well, it's a, it's a big plus. So okay, now I'll, I'll solder that into there. Well, hang on. No, first I'll have to machine, I'll have to machine some of this off. Okay, well, I'll do that, because I want that to move in. So we use the 7 by 12 for that. There, you get to see the 7 by 12, a little sue more. Let's do it. Now, this is a good example of why you can never have too many lathes in the workshop. Uh, normally I do this with the, the little share line. It's handy for the size work, particularly working on brass. In this case, we're going to use the 7x12. You know, two lathes is good, three lathes is better. In this case, I've got four lathes. Now, fire her up, and we'll get into it. Perfect. So how did it turn out? Turned out pretty good. Just a few old fittings. That will go on there. That's good. So that's the same diameter there as there. And we can run the hose across. Yeah. So the next job is do some copper pipe. Put a feed line in there with a screw on it uh, fitting for the airline. Uh, two ports here need some copper pipe in them, which I'll cut off. Then we can run an airline from there to there and there to there. Then she'll be ready to go, really. Well, if it goes. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, that's it for now. See you next time. Cheers.